let's have first the, the tabular presentation. No, the textual presentation first. If you have a data which is composed, for example, of scores, it would be not appropriate to present them in text. It, the manuscript, supposing you're writing a paper, would be boring to read if you present it this way. You enumerate the numbers. So rather than presenting in textual form, you present it in tabular form. Okay lang yung mga textual if you're dealing with qualitative data. But if you're dealing with quantitative data, kailangan nakatable siya. Or in graphs. So we'll, we, we will take up different parts when you're dealing with tabular presentation if you decide to present your data in this way. Okay. Also, you may decide to present it in graphical form, in, in like in chart. Supposing you want to present your uh, the distribution of your time for a certain day, how much time is allotted for sleeping, for, for working, and so on, you may present it this way. Uh, or you may present it in table form, okay? So let's take up table form. When you when you have a table, the title of the table should be on top. It should be above the table. And there's a table number there. There should be a table title. And then we have what we call the column headers. We also have row classifier. You, if it's not yours, if the, da if the data is from a certain source, then you have to indicate where it came from and the date so that the reader would know if it's updated or not updated it has to be so you have to indicate it there if it if you are the one who gather the data and you organize it summarize it then there's no need to write the source it's understood that it is yours it is your data it's a primary data this one is what you call a secondary data and then um, if your data is in row form, you need to organize it. And we have what we call frequency distribution table. You're familiar with this, diba? Right? Frequency distribution table or FDT. It is a grouping of data into categories showing the number of observations in each mutually exclusive category. So this is an example. Supposing there's a professor who wishes to determine the amount of studying students do, and he selects a random sample of 30 students and asks them how much time they allot in hours of studying per week. And this is what he got. This is not an organized data. This is a raw data. As you can see, it's not even ranked from lowest to highest. So what are you going to do? You organize it and then present it such that it, it has a meaning or it, you can read what it means. Anong implication niya? Kasi puro numbers lang yan. You cannot understand if it's all numbers not even arranged. So you need to organize it, di ba? Kasi, can you still remember that in high school? Can you still remember these terms? Class mark, class interval, or re review tayo ulit, no? When you say class mark, um, it is the middle part for each class interval. What is a class interval? Okay, I'm going to illustrate class interval. You are going to arrange the data that we have a while ago. This one, from lowest to highest. And then from that, um, from when they are sorted, you're going to select uh, a certain grouping. Right? You group each each uh, interval and the size of each interval must be the same and so you come up with this like such as this one you need not start with the lowest as you can see the lowest in this case is i think 10.3 you need not start with 10.3 so you may start backwards basta sakop niya yan and so how are you going to 
to to uh, construct this one manually because there's a software sa, sa SPSS sa Excel kaya na niyang gumawa nito isang pindot lang pero review tayo yung ginagawa niyo sa high school anong ginagawa niyo di ba um you rank from highest uh, from lowest to highest tapos ibabawas mo yung low uh, highest minus lowest ganun yon para makuha mo yung range at yung range ay i-divide mo ngayon kung ilan yung gusto mong classes para makuha mo yung class size na naalala niyo pa kaya hal supposing kailangan mong uh, gusto mo ng 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 six class intervals yan yung desired number mo of class interval. So, divide mo yung highest, uh, no, bawas mo yung highest sa lowest value. And then, kung ano yung difference, i-divide mo na desired number of class interval, in this case, 6, para ma-determine mo kung ano yung width ng bawat interval. And this is not a fixed answer. Pwede rin na ganito ang gusto mong gawin. Pwede rin siyang ganito. In this case, meron kang 9, I think, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 classes with a size of 3. Ito naman, 9 classes, pero hindi nag-umpisa ng same lower, lower uh, limit. In this case, ang lower limit niya is 9. Dito naman, ang lower limit niya is 10. Meron kasi tayong tinatawag na lower limit, upper limit. Okay? Kaya, nasa iyo yun. Hin wala siyang fixed answer. So, once your data is grouped into this, parang naging ganito na siya ka-organized, that's what you call group data. Kasi meron tayong ungrouped data. Ito yung kanina. Ito yung ungrouped data natin. Ha? Alala niyo pa? So, review lang to class, ha? Suggestions of constructing a frequency distribution. Um, first, as like what I said before, maximum minus minimum, 23.5 ang difference. Select the number of classes. You want six classes. You divide that by uh, 23.5 divided by six. You come up with closely, no? close to five. So, di, pipiliin mo na yung five. Can you, um, parang four point something yata ang sabot na ito. Um, 23.5 divided by six. I think it's... Uh, 4 point something, but then you round it off to 5. Why select 5? Kasi mas gusto ko yung odd number para yung class mark, gitna, say, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 5 distance, di ba? Kasama si 8, of course. E di 5 yan, anong gitna? Yung 8, 9, 10. Anong gitna dito? 15, dito, 20. So, ganun yun, no? Another way is um, you, if your N is less than 25, this is only advisable if your N is less than 25, uh, what you're going to do is to get the square root. Get the square root of the, uh, the ilan to lahat? This is 30, di ba? Get the square root of that. Kung ano yung sagot, that would indicate you kung ilan yung class Uh, size. That's another way. Okay, so mm, I like what I said, it's up to you kung paano. Now, let me introduce to you yung madali SPSS tayo muna. I, do, I know na marami sa inyo, baka wala nga kayong kopya ng SPSS but you can download a trial version, good for 30 days. For you to be able to explore, kasi pag halimbawa gagawa na kayo ng mga thesis ninyo, eh, gusto nyong mag-analyze ng data na mga 1,000 ang mga data points mo, eh, imamanual mo ba yun? Di ba napakahirap gawin nun? Abutin ka ng sham-sham. Kaya, i-encode mo siya. So what you're going to do first, encode ko siya. Ito yung number of hours natin kanina, di ba? Ito yun. So i-encode ko siya in this way. SPSS kasi, ang kanyang interface is like parang spreadsheet. Meron kang row, meron kang column. So, ito yung, dalawa yung interface mo, meron kang data view, meron kang variable view. So, ito yan, 15. In-encode mo na, no, according to how it appears dito. 
according to how it appears. Now it's 15, 23.7, and so on. So downwards yan, pababa. And then, after which, pag i-press mo yung variable view dito sa baba, mag-change yung interface mo, ito na ngayon ang mag-a-appear. So, makikita mo na pinangalanan, uh, blanco pa yan ha, blanco pa yan. So, pangalanan mo yung variable na to kasi ang tawag dito sa mga data na to, ang variable niya, pangalanan natin, pangalanan natin hours. Kasi, di ba, hours studying ito. So, pangalanan mo siyang hours, tapos tatanungin ka anong type, syempre numeric, anong width, decimal, meron ba? Meron, kasi meron kang 23.7. So, lalagyan mo ng two decimal places, pwede rin one place. And then, values, if you want to define, later na lang, kung ano yung mga values na yan. Sa ngayon, dahil continuous data ito, wala kang ilalagay na values. Kasi continuous eh. Hindi naman siya categorical data. Siguro pag gender yan, oh, maglalagay ka dito, 1 is assigned for male, 2 is assigned for female. And then missing muna, wala ka naman missing entry. Then write a line, scale. Scale ang tawag, level of measurement ito class. Ang scale ang tawag, pagka continuous data. Like ito, Ratio, uh, ratio level to eh. Diba? Sa module 1, meron tayong four levels of measurement. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio level. So, ito, yung last two na interval at saka ratio level, ang tawag ni SPSS, scale. Kaya piliin mo yung scale kasi yun yung nature ng or level ng measurement mo sa variable na R. And so, what are you what are you going to do para makakonstruct ka ng, ng frequency distribution table kay SPSS? So, dahan tayo. You go to transform. Saan yan? Dito siya. And then, press recode into different variables. Di ba may mag-a-appear kasi dyan na menu, pop-up uh, menu. And then, piliin mo yung recode into different variables. And then, mag-a-appear ito itong dialog box na to. So, in the dial dialog box, itong hours na yan, dito yung galing, i-drag mo siya papunta dyan. By pressing this, parang toggle switch yan. Nag-aarrow yan papunta doon para malipat itong hours na to from here to there. So, nalipat na siya. And then, um, select old and new variable uh, values kasi mag-assign ka na ng values na yan. So, once you press this, the next line would be, okay, following the suggested class intervals in slide 10, uh, nasa yun na yan, kahit wala pa yung guide mo. Supposing, okay, gagawa na ako. Basta ang importante, equal sila. Ibig sabihin, first class interval should have the same size as the second class interval, as the third class interval. So, mag-a-assign ka na ngayon. Punta ka sa lowest. Punta ka sa lowest value. Which, from, your, from what you recall, uh, 8 to 12 hours yan, di ba? From 8 to 12. So, we choose the lowest through values. Ito yun. And input the upper limit na 12. Ito yun, 12. Meaning, 12 pa baba. Hindi sakop na niya yung 8. Basta 12 pa baba. So, dito mo ilalagay yung 12. Input ka ng 12 dito. And then after which, you go to new value at mag-assign ka ngayon ng 1. Pag-press mo niyang enter dyan, ibig sabihin nag a add ka na. in mo na siya. No? Pag-press mo ng add. And then, pagkatapos nun, press. Press continue. And then, press that one. And then, number 7. For the next class interval, Meron kang 12.1 to 17. Saan ba galing yung 12.1 to 17? Dito yan, no? Ito, 12.1 to 17. Yan ang sunod na class mo. Okay? So, halimbawa lang, pwede rin wala yun eh. Ikaw mag-isip. So, with that, 12.1 to 17, choose again the range. But this time, hindi na itong lowest. Ang pipiliin mo na itong dalawa na kasi meron ka ng dalawang values na 12.1 to 17. So type mo dito yung 12.1 through 17. Okay? And go to the new value again. Select the value prompt. Type 2 dito sa loob. 
and then press add. Pag press mo ng add, lalabas yan. So, ibig sabihin may dalawa ka ng category ngayon. May dalawa ka ng intervals. Yung isa is 12 and lower. And then yung isa is 12.1 through 17. And then pag press mo ng continue ulit, you will follow the same procedure. Dito ka pa rin hanggang matapos, hanggang abutin mo yung second to the last. Yung 28.1 to 32. Yung fifth. Di ba, anim yun? So, yung fifth class interval, i-input mo pa rin ng kagaya ng ganyan. And pagdating mo dun sa pinakahuling class interval na 32.1 to 7, saan yun? Dito yun. Ito. Dito na tayo, no? Pag-input mo niyan, hindi syempre, pwede mo namang i-shortcut yan. Hindi ka na dito, class. Dito ka na sa highest. Ibig sabihin, from 32.1 pataas. Hindi dito sa 37 kasi hindi niya masasakop yung 32.1. So, dito ka sa 32.1 pataas. Range values through highest. And then, you input yung pang ilan siya. Pang anim. Press add. So, meron ka na ngayon category. Yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag press mo ng add, mag-a-appear dito yung 20, uh, 32.1 to 37. Then, you press continue. So, nagawa mo na ngayon yung, ano mo, automatic siyang magko-collect ng count. Ika-count niya ngayon ilan ang nabilong dito, ilan ang nabilong dyan. So, pag press mo ng continue, then, pala ko nagpipress ako ng continue, hindi pala. And then, wait, saan ako? And then, ayan, pag press mo ng continue, brings you back to recode into different variables dialog box. Kung saan yung dialog box kanina, pag di ba nag-press tayo ng old and new, tapos nag-assign tayo ng mga classes, and pag press mo ng continue, babalik ka dito sa recode into different variables. Itong, itong box na to, pangalanan mo. So, meron kang na-create na bagong variable. Anong pangalan natin? Let's say, hours recode. Bakit Recode ang gusto mong pangalan. Kahit naman ano, pwede mong anong ipangalan mo dyan eh. Uh, gusto kong ma-remind ako every time I look at my variables na ni-record ko yung hours kanina. Kaya pangalanan ko siyang hours underscore record. I don't need to put label. After that, pag-type ko niyan, change. So press change and then press OK. So pag press mo ng OK, you go to variable view. Asan yun? Yung variable view, ito yun, i-press mo yun, variable view. Kasi kanina, nandito tayo eh. Diba? Press the variable view, pag-press mo ng variable view, press values in the variable column, column bar. O, ito na yun. Ito na yung kaninang sinabi ko na ito, itong values na yan. Yan. Pagpunta mo ng variable, oops, nawala ako. Oh, yun. Sana, sana, sana. Um, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Now, what happened actually was, meron kang continuous variable dyan. Diba? Ang sabi ko kanina, ratio level, val ang ratio level yung measurement niya. What you just did, you reduce your uh, level of measurement from a ratio level to a ordinal level. Kasi nag 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ka eh. Parang transform mo yung variable na hours into our recode na ang kanyang level of measurement is ordinal level. Kaya kailangan mo ngayon mag-assign ng values para doon sa 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mo. Okay? Kaya press mo yung uh, values. Nandito tayo. Yun. Press mo yung new value and then... Is it? Ah, ito. Ito na yun. In the value la label dialog box, start typing the class interval from 1 to 6. So, meron kang start with 1. Ano yung, ano yung ibig sabihin ng 1? 8 to 12 hours. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng 2? Ah, 12.1 to 17 hours. And so on. Hanggang sa umabot ka sa 6. Okay? Press add for each category. So, every time you type, you press add. Type again. Hanggang sa aabot ka ng 6. This is to add descriptive label to each class interval when SPSS generates an output. 
Bakit mo ginagawa ito? Para pag mag-generate ng output CS, PSS, hindi niya i-generate yung 1, 2, 3, 4 na hindi mo alam ko ng meaning. Kaya ilalabel mo siya ngayon. This is what you're doing right now. Value labels. And then you press OK. So pag press mo ng OK, gusto mo mag-generate na ng table ng frequency distribution. So you go now to analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. Saan yun? Dito, analyze, and then there's a pop-up menu, and then you press descriptive statistics, and then you press um, frequencies. Ito mag a yung itong dialog box na to. Drag the variable hour code. Ito siya, dito yung galing ha, ito. Dito siya galing. Two variables box and press OK. Pag press mo ng OK, mag-generate na to. Ito na yung mag-a-appear. Meron ka na ngayong ready-made table such that automatic i-count na niya. Ilan ang nabilong sa 8 to 12 hours? Ilan ang nabilong sa 12.1 to 17 hours? Sa 17.1 to 22 hours? And so on. Tapos, i-compute na rin niya kung ilang percent. So, 1 over 30. 10 over 30. So, ito na yon. Pag may missing entry ka, halimbawa, nag-survey ka, tapos tinanong siya kung ilang oras ang ginugugol niya, hindi niya sinagutan yon. So, that would be considered as missing entry. Kaya ilalagay din niya dito sa percent. Kung halimbawa may isa na hindi sumagot out of 30, edi eh, meron ka ditong isa pang entry na 3.3. Pero ang valid percent, hindi niya i-account yung missing entry. Ibibigay niya kung ilan lang talagang sumagot. And it so happened in this case kasi wala tayong missing entry, kaya yon pareho sila. Pero kung may missing entry ka, magbabago to. And then cumulative percent actually is 3.3 plus 33.3 is 36.7 plus 40 is 76.7 plus 13.3 is 90.0 and so on. Kaya yan ngayon, napakadali na lang niya, di ba? All you need to do is assign. Basang importante, tandaan nyo yung natutunan nyo sa high school na dapat. Ang size nito is equal to this. So if you count this one, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 5. Ito, 12. Hindi ka mag-uumpisa ng 12 kasi may 12 na dyan eh. So parang, although alam mo, kasi boundary itong tinatype ko eh. Ito actually mga boundaries to eh. Um... This would be parang mag, magpupunta ka ng whole number. So, 13. Although, lahat ng lugmag pass ng 12 ay dito mo ipapasok para walang ma-miss out na data point. So, 13 dapat kung magka-count ka in terms of size, ha? Pag i-validate mo. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Edi lima pa rin. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Edi lima pa rin. So, tinipe lang natin ganyan kasi meron tayong data na may decimal place. Eh, alam nga namang magdiretsyo ka ng 13 dito, eh, paano naman yung may data point na 12.5? Hindi mo na malaman kung saan mo siya ilalagay, dito ba or dito. So, maging specific ka ngayon. Kaya 12.1 ang nilagay natin kasi we're dealing nga with a continuous data. Nakuha niyo, class? Well, I'm just showing you how it's done in SPSS. And ito yung nakuha nating frequency distribution table. How are you going to describe this? Okay. You can describe this as 3.3 or 3.33% of the students spent 8 to 12 hours studying per week. Ito yun, 8 to 12 hours. Or you could say about 76.7% .7 of the students spent 8 to 22 hours. Pwede mong i-join yung 8 to 22. So, yung three categories, pwede mong i-join. Pero pag i-join mo, ang titingnan mo ngayon, itong cumulative. Yan. Or pwede rin i-emphasize mo yung top two. So, pag i-emphasize mo yung top two, let's say 27.1 to 37 hour, uh, hours, ilang sudyante or ilang percent yon? Eh, ilang percent ito, class? This is about, ah, huh? This is about, pag i-join mo yung dalawa, hindi ka natitingin dito. Kasi ito, nag-start mula dyan eh, papunta doon. Ito yung titingnan mo. I-add mo yan, you have 10%. So, you could say 10% of the students ang baba lang. So, ang tanong ngayon, Hello class, kayo ba nag-aaral? 
Diyang percent bang ginugugol nyo per week. So, 